The man we have with us tonight is an actor, uh, entrepreneur, anchor, uh, and trusted host to India's biggest cricketers and beyond. Uh, he's a good-looking man on screen as I look down the barrel of the camera. Uh, must be 6'2", something like that. Beautiful bass voice, uh, maybe, maybe even deeper. Uh, and he's been described as the most relatable face when it comes to the coverage of sport in India. Uh, it's such a pleasure to support smaller creators like Gaurav Kapoor. I'm kidding. Uh, a huge privilege uh, to welcome you, Gaurav, to the great cricketer universe. Uh, GK, if I can call you that, welcome. Uh, thank you so much, uh, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I was a little uh, apprehensive when I heard that. Uh, when I heard that introduction, I thought somebody else was a guest on the show. I was like, <laughs> Who the hell are they talking about? Uh, I'm, I, do you want me to straighten up? Because right now I'm sitting like Shivna and Chandapal. So if you want, I can just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a few different batting stances like throughout this, would be I good. Just, actually, I want to yeah. do this though. It I want to show. I want you to show us yeah. your legs. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> so. <laughs> Since you said relatable face, I'm going to cover most of it because <laughs> most of my face is pretty dodgy. It nah. was weird. It was weird when you started tapping the bail into the table. That was the weirdest <laughs> bit. Uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, I've got my son batting on the other side. Well, no, I don't have a son. But if I did, he'd be here. <laughs> uh, JK, these are very clever. By the way, these are very clever jokes for people. I think we have just alienated all the peripheral audience. They're like, "What bail, son? What?" <laughs> oh, Perfect. Mate, mate, try doing a whole business based on grade cricket in Sydney. Uh, the whole thing is niche. <laughs> you know? uh, mate, um, the, the game's changing, Gaurav. Uh, like the, the IPL's massive. T20 is on the charge. ODI cricket is now like the dishevelled former great. You know, like yeah. once the toast of the town, now sitting in the corner of the pub, several beers deep every four years, punters come up and say, I remember you, you were great. Uh, against that backdrop, how's the vibe in India ahead of the World Cup? What is there's a World Cup happening in India? <laughs> nah, stop it. Here's what I think. I think that most, uh, I think most buzz and excitement about everything uh, these days, the, the the world that we live in, has just become. It kind of builds up a few days before, right? So nobody, like I think they've they barely launched the the ad film like three weeks before the first game. So everything just kind of builds up later now. But I think when it starts, it is going to be uh, quite nuts, despite the fact that it is the slowest, perhaps the most boring and soon to be redundant format. <laughs> I'll start. Now, you know my views on it. <laughs> Good. I'll start paying attention after the power play uh, mm. in India and Australia at Chennai. There, that's when I start. That's when I think. Oh, the World Cup's about mm. to start. JK, mm. um, uh, <laughs> yeah, wanna... I think that's about right. I'll, I'll tell you what happens though. In uh, as far as all these centers are concerned, while well, the India matches are happening, obviously there's a big rush for tickets and everyone's, you know, those games are definitely going to be big. But that's what happens when India plays in India, no matter what format they're playing, mm. uh, the grounds are going to be packed, right? Because we have people and we have people who this. can go yeah. to the stadium. Yeah. And we have only these many seats and we have those many people. <laughs> so by virtue of that, there will always be enough people. Uh, and of course, the India-Pakistan game, which has uh, kind of moved around here and there and people are going nuts about it. So yes, there will be excitement. I don't know if it's going to be as much excitement as uh, 2011 because people have got used to the slam bank 20 over every, every year, right? Mm. So with that now, 50 overs just seems people can't watch the whole game. If you can watch an entire game from the first ball to the last ball, that means you don't have a job. Mm. So you should go out and try and get a job <laughs> rather than watch 100 overs of cricket in a day. So I think what happens is that shows like your shows that I do, shows, you know, all the storytelling around it actually gets more views because people aren't being able to watch the entire game. So they want to hear the best bits, the fun bits, the trivia, the goings-ons. Mm. But uh, I think in the actual the actual cricket, which is played for those hundred overs, I don't think people will follow the the nuances of it as much as they follow T Twenty cricket or even Test cricket. Mm. Mm. Um, I was going to ask you about uh, like the the ticket situation, where I know uh, basically you can't get a ticket unless you know some pretty powerful people. Uh, hey, yeah, no, wait, wait, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, wait, we're not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> Let me stop you. <laughs> But I want to I want to ask you what what are the kind of crazy stories? What's the craziest story you've heard so far about you know people trying to get tickets? So uh, the one that I heard was even crazier than so so of course tickets is all crazy and people are selling tickets for like 
whatever 50 lakhs which would be a uh, 100000 Aussie right <sighs> so they're trying to sell an india pakistan ticket for that much <laughs> so we've been kind of jo- i was talking to rohan gavaske the, the other day and he was kidding about it and he said whoa i hope india plays in eden gardens because he being a former west bengal cricketing great for ranji we'll get a few tickets he's like oh buddy come on i'm just kidding about it obviously <laughs> like, I, i don't think the gavaskers uh, need that kind of infall and you know but everyone's it's become this big joke here right cuz whoever can get a ticket uh is is then very kind of tongue in cheek way saying oh man maybe i'm going to pass it on because somebody is willing to pay me 500x for it mm. so that is happening they're mm. releasing very few tickets I think they're still not out. I don't think they're sold out because all of them haven't been released as yet. But the the funny story that I heard was uh, for uh, the India Pakistan game in Ahmedabad. What they're doing is that because that city that stadium has a capacity of one hundred and twenty thousand, and I'm sure there's going to be about another one hundred and twenty thousand people in the city or outside trying to get in, whatever. So for a quarter million people, that city doesn't have the hotel infrastructure or you know rooms for them for people to stay. So I heard that people were booking hospital beds <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to oh. sleep in, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and just so it's like. Hey, I'm dying, but hey, I'm here for a cricket match. But yeah, he's in bed. But I'm dying. No, no, but I'm here. So yeah, there's stuff, there's stuff like that happening. Crazy, which is which is kind of little crazy, don't you think? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's crazy uh, for a format that's probably going to die. Uh, like if if India wins, you know, like we were asking this to Tanmay and Varun uh, Tuku, who we were talking to a couple of days ago. Do you think if if India wins the tournament, like if they win? The, the World Cup that they can complete the sport, you know, and and mm. and, and complete the format. Sorry, and that we can now move on with with the future of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Get it to us. Get it to us. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think about One Day Cricket. So I had announced my retirement from One Day Cricket a couple of years ago, uh, but I'm going to be back on uh, Crick Buzz to do this World Cup because uh, hey, money. <laughs> so, uh, uh, for the team, oh, we've got a good team. Uh, we've got Virender Seva, Ashish Nehra, Zaheer Khan, Patel, Patel. So these are all yeah. my buddies, and they said, "Come on, man, let's do it. It'll be fun." So I said, "Okay, cool." It was as easy as that. But I'll tell you what is the problem with One Day Cricket. You have the first ten overs where something happens, and then you have the last ten overs where something happens. And I said this to a couple of cricketers as well who play. It's like why do you hate one day cricket so much? I was like, okay, let's have a serious discussion. This is what I think. From over eleven to over forty, I said, you as batters are happy if you can get seven, seven and a half and over. The bowlers are happy to give six, six and a half and over. So what's happening is from eleven to forty, it's like a government office where a file is just moving from here to there, <laughs> right? So yeah. you're happy to uh, you take this, okay, cool. Oh, no, I'm going to take this, and then you just keep negotiating the one run here and there. No one's really pushing. No one's really going uh, hell for leather. So the and and that's the format, right? It's not like the cricketers are lazy, or it's not like they're like, no, no, I don't want to play now. I haven't got my check. It's just that's the sport. From eleven to forty, everything is just slow. Everyone's kind of waiting. Everyone's in the bushes, and then we're gonna leap out in the last ten overs. So that's what happens, and that's what they do. So even they are all phoning it in from eleven to forty. Mm. So which leaves what the first ten and the last ten? Mm. When you put them together, what have you got? <laughs> come on, come on, guys, I'm come thinking, on. Yeah. Two games of t- <laughs> yeah. two games of t tens. Yeah, t ten. <laughs> yeah, t- yeah. t- yeah. t- that's, so, that's where the future. So is. That's what I think. I think that's why it's the it's the slowness and the kind of meandering in the middle yeah. that uh, doesn't really get people that excited. Yeah, but mm. if India win, I mean, mm. like let, let's let's ask this star uh, then, GK. Like, is this India's time? You know, obviously the IPL is. Is the tournament now in the world? It's it is the biggest tournament. India owns and controls cricket now. It's your time. You know they're talking about yeah. changing the country's name to Bharat. You know back to the 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 Hindi name. Like is this India's time to to really just grab it? This this is the game. This is the moment. I I, I don't know, man. I mean. If Australia leaves their monopoly on the World Cup, then perhaps somebody else can have a chance. <laughs> no, right? it's ours. It's so ours. You guys can have a chat with your team. Yeah, and just leave it for a second. It's okay. Let the kids play as well. Uh, I think that I mean India could win it absolutely, mm. uh, but I think England and Australia are really strong. 
Uh, I like uh, obviously Pakistan. So I think these are unanimous. Everybody's kind of four picks for the semi-finals. Uh, I also really like New Zealand if Kane Williamson is back. So I would put them as the dark horse. Uh, but from there, it's anybody's game, right? Mm. So that's what I think. If India was to win the World Cup, uh, I don't think India winning the World Cup or not winning the World Cup will have any. I don't. I don't feel that it has. I've never thought about this question, so it's quite interesting. I don't think it'll have any bearing on what the future of the game will be. I don't think it'll be. Oh, we won the fifty over World Cup. Now let's just shut that file and put it at the back of the the closet. I don't think that's going to happen. The twenty seven World Cup is definitely going to happen. I'm not sure about the thirty one World Cup. I'm definitely, definitely sure that. One day international bilateral series, the pointless ones. I don't see those. Do you guys see those happening in like five years from now? Nah, I don't see those happening in I five years. Not. Like, what's the point? I don't even know like who's playing anymore. Like, sometimes we're sitting and looking at stats saying that oh, this team has won fourteen ODI series at home. Like, what? When? How? <laughs> uh, they played seven in the last year against who? Like, no idea. So this is, it, it's 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 too much. And it's unsustainable mm. to have all these formats and to have people excited about all these formats. What am I as an Indian cricket fan excited about for India right now? India is going to play England in the test matches. I'm excited about that. India is going to play in South Africa. Yes, I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, not as much as the India-England test games. So, which means that over five months, that's enough, mm. right? Mm. That's that's a good like 40, 45 days of cricket over four months effectively. That's a lot of time to be kind of investing into a sport. So we are playing too much cricket. So obviously the ones that are lagging behind uh, will fall back. And I feel that's the bilateral ODIs. Yep. That's what I feel. <clears throat> just sort of related to that, JK. Can I call you JK, by the way? It feels very familiar, you know, like we've just met on camera. But I would I would prefer if you use my formal name of yes. Lord Curzon Homestad. <laughs> but uh, GK's all right. GK's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got a real um, like ignorant uh, white boy question uh, for a, for a man in India. Like, I look at you, yeah, and you just make that sound with your voice. Like, <laughs> I look at you, like you're you're a man of range, you know. Like you've been an actor, entrepreneur. Uh, you you look like you'd just be just like at home in Bollywood as well. Are, are you really into cricket? Like, do you really like it, or is it just the only vehicle? Okay. Like th no, that you have in I India to talk it. about. So here's shit. the thing: I've, I've <laughs> only done two things since I was five years old: watch cricket and watch really crappy cinema, right? Like campy. Cra I love, I love good cinema. Everybody loves it. Yes, it's a cool thing to say on an international forum as uh, as this. But I love campy shit, man. So I have just all all I know, all I have known since I was five years old is cricket. And and cinema, and I love doing radio, and I love doing live broadcasting, and I love being on stage. So when cricket and live broadcasting came together, I was like a kid in a candy store. I was like, "What? Really? <laughs> Did I pay for this? Be lucky." So yeah, I really, I really love cricket, and I watch it. And uh, Ajay Jadeja keeps joking all the time, and he tells other ex cricketers, "Saying you guys have no idea what big geek is he's watching." I'm, I kid you not. Yeah, I think I I have definitely watched every session of the Ashes, even if I've not mm. sat down and watched it. I watched the highlights, or it's been on, either on mm. a uh, on a tablet next to me, or on a TV, or on a phone. It's just always on. So I I still do that. Mm. I still do it. Yeah. Like I'll tell you something. I really liked Terry Alderman's action and how he used to say <laughs> Wow. That is okay. I'm a Terry Alderman wow. fan. That is niche. It's the least cool thing I've ever heard. Um, <clears throat> okay, Jake. Well, let, let me, let me uh, hit you with another like, least cool uh, cricket question then, like really contemporary stuff. So uh, India's named its World Cup squad. Looks pretty good. Yeah. It's then named yeah. a squad for some warm-up ODIs against Australia. Got Guy Quad yeah. in there, Tilak Varma, uh, a couple of extra guys. Uh, then named an Asian game squad. Uh, yep. Six more batters, two keeper batters. No place for Sanju Samson. Uh, now I'm getting into some serious stuff. Like uh, he wrote yeah. overnight, it is what it is. I choose to keep moving forward. Now, like we followed the IPL for years. He's one of the best in the tournament. He averages 50 plus in ODIs for India. Like when he says it is what it is, what do you think it is? <laughs> uh. I think what it is, is that it feels like he's just out of contention, right? Mm. And that he's run out of rope. Mm. I don't think he was given a very long rope to begin with, but 
that's just luck, right? Mm. Some people do 10 episodes of a podcast and they have to shut it down and some get lucky and can do a thousand, right? Mm. So it's, it's, it's a lot to do with where you are, when you are, more than how you are, mm. right? So it has to do with that as well. For example, all the wicket keepers who were playing their trade when MS Dhoni was playing for India, right? Yeah. Right. It just it just happens. Mm. So maybe just because of that, there's a there's a real kind of traffic jam of middle order batters in India right now. And uh, you know that you need a believer in your talent. So I'm not saying this favoritism, but at the end of the day, you guys are going to you know want to work with people you like. That's a very simple kind of logic. Right. I like to work with people I like. You want to have people around you who you believe in. Right. And you will perhaps believe in somebody a little more than a second person. That second person could have more talent in my eyes than the first person. But hey, it's your gig, it's your show, it's your team. So that's what I feel. Nirav and I were having this very conversation yesterday. I don't know if you had it uh, with him. Uh, but it's crazy because he sent me a message saying, what, what's happening with Sanju Samson? There was a real question mark. And it was a, the concern in the message was like he was Sanju's dad. <laughs> it was very like that. <laughs> and uh, I think that's what's happening with all uh, Sanju fans. They're like, well, I don't know, did he get a chance? Did he not? But when I look back, in all fairness, and I'm super fond of the guy. Yeah. I really like him. Uh, I've you know spent time with him. Actually, I spent time with all of them. So I get a little kind of waylaid by that. Uh, but I also can't think back. And those numbers are great, right? But I can't think back in the last couple of years to one innings where he just owned mm. the stadium, the game, the narrative for that one day. Right. And you can't remember. I don't know if you guys can, but I can't remember where he just kind of you know, just tore it. He just he just tore a hole into the opposition. So I guess that happens as well. Everybody has got fewer chances now. And uh, if a captain like, for example, you know that Rohit believes a lot in Tilak Varma because he's made a statement in public saying, I believe that this kid is a three format player. That is huge. Mm. Right. That is that's a, that's a, that's a huge call. You know that he feels like he can play. You know, T20, Tess, and the 100. That's not the third format, sorry. <laughs> and Modi, and Modi, I test. <laughs> so obviously, he's going to, if a youngster's coming through, the captain who has a say is going gonna, is gonna to back the guy whose talent he believes in. So I feel it's a, it's a combination of all these things. And I really believe that in India, the, uh, there's, a, there's a word uh, called mahol, right? So mahol means what's the... Uh, What's the talk? What's the what's the wind? What's the atmosphere? It's mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit like that, right? Mm -hmm. What's the narrative being said? And uh, it's become that. It's that you know, Tilak Varma is the guy who people believe now is more a contender than even Surya Kumar Yadav, who is an amazing talent with white ball cricket. And why does that happen? Because somebody gets ten chances, they don't perhaps you know burn a hole in your imagination and then you say okay well there's this new guy and we probably like him more so it happens and things change and that's just i feel the world that we live in i don't think it's personal i don't think it's you know machiavellian or vindictive i just think it is what it is mm -hmm. <laughs> so no, i see uh, gk like just culturally because like um you know in australia we had our golden generation of the 90s and the 2000s and a lot of those guys are in the media now and and they really loom large in in the in the minds of the present team like the pressure that the present team have to perform uh, you know the, yeah. and the the heights they have to scale to is it the same with this Indian team heading into the World Cup? Because obviously in 2011, a lot of these guys will be your friends, you know, like uh, like yeah. Gambier and Sawag and, and Habajan. These guys who were in, in and around the team that time winning the World Cup, it, do they have the same um, – does the current team have the same pressure from the team that won it 12 years ago as what Australians seem to have from the 90s and 2000s team? That's a really interesting question. So they do have pressure from people, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, it's India playing in India. So wherever they go, there's going to be pressure in the World Cup. I don't think they have, uh, yeah, I don't think they have pressure from the old team, whether it's 2011 or 1983. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any pressure saying, oh, you got to win, you got to... The, the current lot, you have to realize that the current lot in India is, is very different. Now, what's happened with cricket in India is like, there's about... 60 guys who've played in the last two years, right? Some because of the pandemic, some because multiple teams at the same time, uh, injuries, people resting, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, I mean, I, I'm kind of just guessing this number, 
but it's about 60 65 people have played cricket for india so what happens is everyone becomes a lot more individualistic mm. cuz uh, till 10 years ago there was a group of people that was playing right there was a, there was a group it was going to be in 20 <laughs> maybe 25 now yeah. there's ipl and all these other uh, kind of factors which means that the group has become much larger it's a group that is there they anyway everybody in that group is a superstar because they all play the IPL and they make a lot of money and they mm. do brand deals, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So they are confident. Uh, they have support of fans. They've got the money. So, uh, and they, and they don't really, the team changes, right? So it's, they can't really make those bonds. So everyone's become a lot more individualistic. So I don't even think they are, I don't think they're looking at kind of older players unless there's a one-on-one -on -one equation somewhere, right? Where someone's right. been a mentor directly. But I don't think there's any pressure in the media of the old team saying, oh, like, you got to win it like us. I can understand in Australia because, like, Australia wins the World Cup, you know, every second Tuesday. So that's why there is pressure that, you know, <laughs> you guys, yeah, you better do it as well. So I can understand why in Australia. But culturally in India, I don't think there's any any pressure from uh, from the 2011 team on the current lot. Oh. Speaking of, like, different eras, GK, like... Let's talk about breakfast with champions, Oak Tree Sports Production. Is that right? And uh, yeah, like, correct, yes, yeah. You uh, you run conversations with like classical gods like Sonny G, you know, and then yeah, yeah. and then a couple of seasons later you will be talking to uh, uh, Jemima Rodriguez. Like, is yeah. is there an era of cricket that you feel especially connected to? Like, do you have any OGs, you know, that you're sitting down with and going, oh yeah, this is sick, you know, or like, are you just, uh, do, you, do you just treat everybody equally and are equally awed by all these Indian cricketers? No, uh, the the first one, the first thing that you said. You know, <laughs> for me, for me uh, Sunil Gavaskar and Kapil Dev, mm, right? Yeah. They are like my heroes. Yeah. So when I started watching cricket, there was uh, Sunil Gavaskar who used to bat and I used to just be fascinated by him. So the chance to kind of hang out with him, uh, you know, be sitting next to him on a flight or, you know, having a drink with him somewhere in Manchester or, you know, just going to the gym with him in, in Guyana or Trinidad. It's just, it's, it's kind of surreal, right? <laughs> that I can get to do that. And the first time I realized that was when I was doing extra innings on Sony for the IPL mm. and, and legit, it was my birthday. And the two guests that we had, the two analysts that we had on the on the show that day was Kapil Dev and Sunil Gavaskar. Oh, yeah. and I was like, dude, is this my birthday? <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so me, yeah, I was just, my head was exploding. So for me, yeah. uh, those two, those two will always be heroes. King Viv, mm. King Viv is uh, a, a huge hero. So again, him. Mm. So I think these three for me while growing up, because also in the eighties and the back half of the eighties, it was, it was the West Indies, right? And in the West Indies, it was Viv Richards. Yeah. Walk out, his gum, <laughs> yeah. He's slamming yeah. the ball. He's yeah. just, yeah. So for me, those are the OGs. So I, I don't get as, so what happens is with that 2000, the batch of 2011 that you were just talking about the world cup batch, uh, they are all great cricketers and I respect them and, you know, I, I support them in their own field. But I don't get overawed by them because when I started my career in show business, these guys were starting their career in cricket. Yeah. Mm. So we were just kind of a bunch of 20-year-olds in Mumbai hanging out, partying at night, doing things that, you know, 20-year-olds do. So I kind of knew them from then. So we almost became like... so not colleagues, but we became friends and like batch mates. So even while they attain all that greatness, like you could, you know, be friends with, you know, the, if your school buddy becomes, you know, Tom Cruise, he's still your school buddy, right? So <laughs> so that's what happens, I think, with them. But with with Sunil Gavaskar and with Kapil Dev, like I can I can never forget. It. I have this incident with Kapil Dev that happened when I was eight years old. So Pepsi had just come into India. And uh, I, I don't know if you had these in Australia, but you had these uh, glass, the crates of glass bottles those prohibition era shows so they had those with you know 24 bottles in it and if you bought an entire crate uh, then you got a chance to enter some competition couple they would come to your house like he would legit come to your house <laughs> if you want so uh, somebody I knew won by, by somebody I knew I mean my cousin's neighbor's <laughs> grandson's friend. Close yeah. connection in yeah. India, yeah. right? Yeah. So 
he had won this. So obviously a call has gone and a call has gone and a call has gone and all us kids have got collected and we have traveled halfway across the city to go and meet Kapil Dev. So he's like 40 kids waiting in this little courtyard for him to come. And uh, I, I get a little claustrophobic sometimes. So there was, you know, these, that's why I don't go to stadiums anymore. So <laughs> there's 40 kids there and Kapil Dev's coming. So I get really like uh, hassled with the crowd. So I go inside the living room and I sit down on the couch and he comes in and he sits down on the couch right next to me, just yeah. purely by sh dumb luck. He's sitting right next to me. So I'm just like, ah, and just as I try to talk <laughs> and say something as an eight-year-old tongue-tied, the kid whose house it is, his grandmother comes, just shoves me aside and says, just move. <laughs> just move me aside and sits down next to him. So I'm in no photo, I'm in nothing. So I told uh, Kapil Paji this story once when he was sitting next to me on a flight and he laughs and he says, but you are sitting next to me now. <laughs> 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 like yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. I gotta ask. I gotta ask just on that story. Like you're uh, in Guyana with Sunny G. Like, what's he doing in the gym? Is he is that bench press? Uh, what, is it, is it pull <laughs> watch it? Yeah. He's Chest a cardio king. He loves doing cardio. Yeah. yeah. So he gets his cardio in every day. Man, it's like my favorite thing, right? So uh, Sunny G is <laughs> awesome. Sunny G will have a glass of red wine with you. He's not, you know, a big drinker, but he'll have a glass or two of red wine and he will enjoy it and savor it and tell you stories. And there was King Viv, uh, who, you know, have a couple of rums that I'm sure he'd just kind of gargle with. <laughs> <laughs> so they're both there. And we were, we had this travel advisory saying that you can't leave the hotel in Guyana. So I'm like, okay, I guess we can't. It was, uh, it was a really nice kind of open area that you had. There was nobody from outside allowed in the hotel. So there was a pool and there was a poolside area and nice weather. So he would go to the gym every day and then we'd come in the evening and they'd just sit down and both of them would just talk about them playing each other in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And Ajay Jadeja, Ashish Nehra and me are just sitting there gobsmacked going, <laughs> geez, have we like, we must have done something really good in our previous life. <laughs> <laughs> so serious good karma, man. <laughs> because they just, they just go into this discussion and it's no like, it's not like they're telling you know, sensational stories that no one's ever heard before, right? Mm. It's just them discussing why Sunny G thought one bowler was better than the other mm. or why we've thought, no, but this one did. And you're just listening to them going, whoa. <laughs> These are, it's like, it's like really, it's like Beethoven and Mozart sitting and talking about, you know, instruments and how a string mm. is tied and how mm. they tune a piano. <laughs> like, this is just insane. Uh, yeah. So when stuff like that happens with your heroes, you think, yeah, I did all right. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. Cool. It's, it's, a, it's literally, I kid you not, it's a little bit like how you guys are feeling right now while talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly I was just saying in reverse. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> You've actually been on mute for the last five minutes. I didn't catch what you, <laughs> didn't catch what you I was said. I just checking but, my text. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, sounds about right. Hey, you, <laughs> Gaurav, you mentioned uh, the extra inning show uh, just beforehand. I know uh, a few years ago, maybe twenty twenty, you said that that Harsha Harsha Bogle obviously uh, saved your career after some uh, incident on that show. Um, so I want to know how much uh, or what percentage what percentage of your paycheck does Harsha take since then after saving your career. 90%. He takes 90% of everybody's <laughs> paycheck who works in cricket. That's, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. That's how Harsh is a billionaire. Yeah. He's yeah. been on your show, so you know. Yes. Uh, did you see the gold teeth? He's got some gold yeah. teeth. <laughs> some spares. Yeah. So he stores his cash. <laughs> got his money where his mouth is. Uh, so uh, what happened in the incident is that there was something that I, I was just bear in mind, I was younger and a, a, a lot more hot blooded and Punjabi at the time. So <laughs> there was this, uh, there was this, there, it was, I think the second or the third IPL and they wanted to bring this real. So we always treaded this fine line of entertainment and cricket in extra innings. So my belief is always there is a fine line between irreverence and disrespect. So we will stay on the side of irreverence, but not go to disrespect. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have fun. It's going to be entertaining, but we will talk about cricket and the soul of the show will be about cricket. But every now and then, creatively, you go down a path which perhaps is not correct, but it's good you try it. But you should know when it's fail and leave it be. So that was the disagreement. 
with the people who were one of the people who was creatively running the show and uh, they were getting uh, they were getting stand up comedy on the show but stand up comedy can work on that format cuz you also had cheerleaders singers dancers drummers navjot siddhu me <laughs> you had <laughs> film actors you had you had a lot of elements but this element was not working it was kind of jarring and uh, i remember one day when i felt like I, it was that was i was at the end of my rope i couldn't so I was, it was going live and i was just looking and it saying in my ear laugh I'm like i don't find that funny I, how am i why why should i laugh i'm yeah. not going to go ha, ha, ha. you have navjot singh siddhu for that right he <laughs> has a very good fake laugh i don't have a fake laugh my real laugh sounds like a fake laugh my fake laugh sounds like a psychopath so i'm not going to do it so i did so it became this big thing that why are you not doing it and you know you're not playing for the team i'm like but you are making stupid decisions i have to front them nobody will say that it's your show that chitty they're going to say it's my show that it just became this huge thing yeah to a point where i was about to walk out and luckily that day harsha was a guest on the show he was one of the analysts uh, and i was the presenter so he he comes to my room and he is as you know one of the calmest people in the world yeah and he comes and he goes what have you goes me chote mia which is uh, like younger brother so he says kya ho chote mia what happened it's like no <laughs> <laughs> no, but why? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Sure, sure. So he let me vent. Yeah. And then he said, "Just whatever decision you take, just take it calmly. Just, just take it calmly. Think about it. Think long term." So I took a few deep breaths. Uh, it luckily we had about thirteen or fourteen overs more to go in that inning. <laughs> so I had some time. I took a breath, and then. me and the the creative director we both had a chat and we both kind of apologized to each other for raising our voices and we said right, let's try to find the middle ground so i chuckled in the next show <laughs> when the comedian came and uh, two episodes later that element was gone so everybody was happy so that's what happened but yes harsha did save my career that day and from that day onwards what a guy i have paid him back by being his mentor and guiding light on a regular basis <laughs> which he, he needs yeah yeah, yeah he needs yeah. that yeah. yeah i kid you not that that kid's got a lot of potential you know he just <laughs> needs a, that, yeah. just a, you know yeah. every now and then he needs a little uh, spotlight thrown on the path to just show him where he's going uh, and i do that rather selflessly <laughs> you know you know what? it sounds like a joke but i'm 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 really serious about this actually and he's also we produced uh, something last year and and tanme who you've had in your podcast mm. so it's really funny because tanme is a really good buddy of mine so whenever i go to bangalore he comes to hang out and you know he comes to in fact he's in mumbai right now so he may be dropping by uh, a little later i wish he was coming now you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. cross over that show, like marvel right yeah. <laughs> it's like iron man's coming into thor uh <laughs> That sounded wrong. <laughs> no, no, we'll clip that up. Yeah. Uh, that's that, that's on, that's on a separate channel. That's yeah. on, that's on the OnlyFans channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. For another day, <laughs> you can make a little illustration of that. But uh, he, so Tanmay came. He said, "I'm coming." And who's who are you sitting with? So I was Harsha there, and there was Yuzi Chehel. Chehel was presenting a show that I was producing with Olympians, and uh, Harsha at that time was doing a voiceover for a campaign we were making for Thumbs Up. So uh, he came and he said, "What are you guys doing?" I said, "Nothing, man." just to produce a entertaining my talent <laughs> so amazing to say but with uh, but with harsha it's quite uh, it's it's amazing i i really treasure the relationship that i have with him because he is uh, a few years older than me but what happens is that he is so open to new ideas and i guess that's how you stay relevant after 40 years in the business that he will meet you he will ask you he will ask you the correct questions he will take your opinion and in fact when he was starting crick buzz i remember that time digital was not big and you know this whole um, issue had happened with him and commentary and he had been let go and this you, you guys all know what yeah. happened there and he was really like sad about it so i just told him i said one second how many more cricket games will you do how much more commentary will you do you like you you do another 100 games you do another one game you will be as relevant to the audience you made your legacy you will be remembered for the next 50 100 years as like the voice of cricket but this is a new medium mm. there are new people it's a new team i really think that you should invest in this and you should go for it and uh, and he did and you know look at him now he's like yeah. a 
digital giant right <laughs> So uh, yeah, so you know what? He helped me. I helped him. Mate, I was that was genuinely going to be the next question because, like, uh, both of you guys, uh, but but let's focus on you. Could easily sit in uh, traditional media, being stars of the of old media, uh, at the yeah. stuff maybe that we grew up with as kids. And even when, when we were kids, we felt like, oh, the apex of cricket or cricket storytelling is to be on television in front of people or to be a commentator. And then, as you uh, start to wander around that scene a little bit, it's a little bit more restricting than having your own thing, you know, that, that you own where you can tell stories and be yourself and do it in your own way. And you find with an audience that they seem to appreciate that more. You know, you can get your own identity from opposition to the way things used to be done. Excuse yeah. me. And I, I wanted to ask you about that because you've done that really well, right? You've got Oak Tree Sports, mm. you with Crick Buzz. Uh, you obviously, you know, you, you come on, um, I, I mean – enter onto uh, <laughs> smaller <laughs> creative shows like ours uh, and uh, take part in it. You're obviously a real believer in in new media and different ways of, of telling stories, right? Absolutely. Uh, spot on. And after I left uh, Sony, I mean, I was never really kind of with them or whatever. After Sony get let the rights go, I also jumped onto digital and Oak Tree was already doing digital at the time. Like I was a complete believer. And I, I love that line that you just said, which is opposition to, uh, you know, to old media. So when I created Breakfast with Champions, my idea, and I used to tell everybody, I said, I want to make the anti-TV show. Yeah. Like the exact opposite of a television show. So there are no lights. All the cameras are really far away. Uh, there is no link. I never do an opening link to camera. I hardly ever acknowledge the camera. So he said, let's just break all the things that we take for granted. Can we just kind of just move past them? So macro, that was how I designed the show. And micro, that's how we designed the company. He said, we're just going to do stuff which is digital because that's where people are consuming. So two reasons. One is that People are more and more being individualistic when they consume content. So, uh, you know, that's where you get them because that's where they are. And second, creative autonomy. Like you guys, I'm sure, I don't know if you do it, but if you go back to your very first episode and you watch, and you're, you're like, who are these guys, man? Like, what were we doing then? <laughs> but you were doing what was best at that time and the audience mm. loved you then. And they have also evolved with you. Mm. So you have evolved, they have evolved. And that journey and that relationship I find is beautiful, right? Episode 65 of Breakfast with Champions is totally different from episode one, as it should be, right? And the audience comes with you on that journey. With television, I feel there is a similarity that it's just, it, it's tried and tested. And I don't blame them. It's lowest common denominator because of just the money that's at stake. So that storytelling tends to stay very static mm -hmm. through the years, right? They, they don't have that much scope to experiment uh so yeah they they don't do it whereas here you can so i'm a i'm a big believer in this and i'm just gonna double down triple down uh on this format mm. at the same time Gaurav, um, you, we're just using you as a medium to try and get shurik khan's phone number um so uh if you can i, wish I presume he's in the house can we just can he just he's right here actually i kid you not he lives down the road from me he lives down the road. I stand every day and I wave flags with his name and he just never responds. You should have asked Tanme. I think Tanme is a gaming, he's a gaming buddy. With oh, a gaming buddy. Uh, okay. Yeah. Me not, not, me not so much. He doesn't, uh, like, I don't go to games anymore. And mm. even he doesn't go to games anymore. Maybe because I don't go to games anymore. Mm. So I think that uh, he's also not been seen at Eden Gardens because of that. So we don't like cross paths. Uh -huh. But if I do... I'll give you love. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, hey, Stu Aussie guy said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we can't have a, an interview with someone who like uh, knows Ravi Shastri without asking about Ravi Shastri. I think Aussie is like a particularly uh, interested in Ravi because he has that alpha bravado that we just uh, will respect above all else when it comes to the masculine form, you know? And uh, <laughs> I... I, I, I well, it's just true. <laughs> uh, I, I, I learned Say that, that line again. He's got this alpha. He's got alpha bravado that we. Alpha bravado. Yeah, that like in Australia we respect above all other forms like of masculinity. Like it's the peak alpha masculine form. Alpha bravado of the masculine form. Well, is it, well, that's true, isn't it? Like uh, 
Uh, and I was going on my Twitter bio. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, boys. I want to ask you <laughs> later on to like do your deepest voice possible. But anyway, um, <laughs> I, I I learned that you are uh, call you call him champ. Now, like, champ, now yes. this is cross cultural <laughs> cross cultural stuff. I get it, but like in Australia, like champ is the biggest insult you can give somebody. Yeah. You know, like it's it's, con- it's a good thing that we're not in Australia. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing we're not Australians. <laughs> no, I think you know, in, in Australia, I mean it purely as a because one of my first kind of cricket memories is him on that uh, Audi, just him winning that and oh, him being called yeah, champion of champions. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. And Sunil Gavaskar lifting that trophy, wearing yeah. his while well, everybody else was wearing that white uh, sunny hat, and he used to wear the. The dark blue or the black yeah. one. Uh, I think it was dark blue, but we had really grainy television, so it was black. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my earliest memory. So when I met him, I used to just call him Champ because of that. But yeah. why is why is that an insult in uh, Australia? Sort of inverted, like uh, mm. you, you call someone champion to um, be condescending to them because obviously, if you're like a boxing champion, you are the top of everything. But if you're trying to insult somebody, you mm. say, "How are you, Champ?" You know, how are you champion when they're clearly not that, mm. that don't hold that title. It's, it's yeah. kind of, uh, it's a bit inverse, but uh, I don't make the rules. It just is what it is. You don't want to call someone that in jail me, either. Will you just give me a second? Because I've got to make a quick phone call to Matthew Hayden because he has called me champ a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just come back to me. Yeah, great champion. <laughs> champion. <laughs> it's got a lot of layers to it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he has. Yes, it's Hados. Yeah, yeah, Hados. Yeah. I thought you were my friend. Uh, yeah. He's, he's no, big on. He's you, big on the chat. You got champs, man. Yeah. Uh, Dos. As also, we... one second. You can't mess with Hados, right? I mean, nah. Hados goes nah. not to his face. Whatever Hados calls you, say it's fine, <laughs> right? Hundred percent. Because he will legit yeah. pour you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but That's like, fine, Hados. I'll be your champ. <laughs> I'll be your champ. <laughs> we get I'll be your champ. <laughs> back to the Thor stuff. Uh, so, like, Ravi Shastri, like, in Australia, we, we'd say, like, he'd be a great beer, but I also mm. feel like he'd be a great bottle of red. You know, like, what's the what's the angle on Ravi Shastri? You know, what, what, what? what do we have? Or what is in he God's great, name he, does that mean? What do you mean he'd be a great beer? I don't really like, know. He's a great guy to have a beer with? Yeah, or yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Is he malt-based said, beverage? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just shorthand, really. Yeah, he's a great guy to have a beer with, or is he a great guy to have oh, wine is. with or whiskey? Or like, what, what? what's your choice? He, he likes uh, a red wine. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I got dehydrated just thinking of red, was one. red one in there. Yeah, I wish I was Ravi Shastri. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ravi Shastri loves. Uh, he's a great drinking buddy, by the way. Mm. And he doesn't get drunk. It's crazy. Yeah, really. Uh, he can crazy. really. He's. He can really. He can pack it in, and he's fun, and he mm. owns the bar. Yeah. Right. What he owns the evening. He owns the place. He owns want. everybody who's there. Hell Alpha yeah. bravado, mm. energy of the masculine form. <laughs> Fuck right? yeah! Right, completely. We were in New Zealand last year, and uh, and Ravi's got friends as he would. Right, I mean, forty years of whatever being on the road, he's got friends in every country, and he, you know, and and successful people. So you know, somebody's coming to pick him up from somewhere, and they say, "Oh, you you guys go on the bus. My friend's driving me." So he'd be <laughs> driving from. You know, Auckland to mm. Hamilton, mm. Uh, you know, in a friend's car and, you know, so and dinner with somebody and, you know, and, and he knows, you know, important people and politicians and things like that. Mm. But, but uh, you know, kind of bottom of the food chain civilians like me uh, would get an <laughs> evening with him once every three or four evenings. Mm. And then uh, and we were a group of buddies because uh, Amazon did uh, the broadcast for the New Zealand tour uh, yeah. in India last year when India yeah. went to New Zealand. And they decided that they wanted to add to the disguised unemployment figures of India by taking, I think they took, if I'm not mistaken, 18 commentators, right? <laughs> For six games. They just said, in the years, let's get everybody along, right? <laughs> everybody, let's go. So we, we, my, my core group of friends, Ajay Jadeja, Zahir Khan, Ajit Agarkar, who we now call chairman, because he mm. is, <laughs> and Ashish Nehra. And me, we were there. Every game was raining. We had three, three days in the middle. It's New Zealand. It's a good gig, right? It's yeah. a great gig. Mm. And then there was Rami. There was also Harsha. There was also mm. Mohammed. Ke- it was a, it was a big gang. Simon Dool. But Ravi, every three nights, once every three nights, 
would send us a message saying just a, just a pin he would just drop a pin off the bar that he'd be sitting at and he'd be like boys where are you come here and all five of us <laughs> oh man <laughs> that's perfect you know, like, what i wouldn't give we oh. we'd, we'd get there he's at the bar the staff is eating out of his hands there are two three other people who are yes. just saying hi he's bought two drinks for somebody else yeah. there's food what are you boys going to have come on get them one get them two food come on order more <laughs> gk what do you want it's just he is oh, the man. best host the best yeah. guy to have what a guy. and i remember it was great because the first evening we had done we had gone there and we had done a tech check which we were they were just i think testing links or something and it was raining as it does in wellington and we were just kind of phoning it in it was a bit of a mess in my ear nobody you know it was just one of those uh, everyone's kind of getting used to you know what it is so people talking over each other etc so there was ravi uh, and harsha and zahir and me so we were just doing kind of a test thing and when we did it i was kind of all over the shop but I was kind of just phoning it in right I thought we were just checking sound and light and stuff so we meet in the evening and he goes yo you're rusty <laughs> what says you know me I don't lie to you you're rusty pick your game up <laughs> like uh I'm really sorry Rav I was like okay you but you're it's it's Ravi Shastri man he has got more broadcasting experience than everybody on yeah, the planet yeah. and he's brought he's done it with the best in the world all over the world with every broadcaster so when he says something that's that's people don't say that right mm. nobody critiques you honestly mm. so i heard him out and i said you have got a valid point yeah i was phoning it in a bit and but i was a bit you're right i'll keep this in mind and the next day we did the game and he comes after the game and he goes that was good well done that's the gk i know and just says that and just goes away <laughs> like this guy. He is just shit, man. amazing man. So he, oh. I love him. Yeah. He brings excitement. Right energy. To a game of cricket. Mm. And he has got zero fucks to give. Yes. Absolutely. And that is uh, an enviable quality man. Mm -hmm. He does not care who is saying what about him because he knows who he is. He knows what he's doing and that's all that matters to him. Mm -hmm. Uh final one. Are you good? Yeah. No. Uh, I'll, I'll finish with a serious one, JK. Because uh, this has been a, this has been an awesome chat uh, and lots mm. to clip up, especially the Thor stuff. But um, <laughs> you, 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 rec you recently said in an keep interview, keep the Thor stuff. Come on, yeah, that's just my favorite bit. But um, you recently said in an interview, uh, there are two kinds of privileges in the world: one that is inherited, and one that is earned. Yes. Uh, but you have to use it to make things better. Uh, yeah. India as a country has a privilege now of largely setting the vision and course uh, of the global game of cricket. Yeah. Uh, I think it's accurate to say it was a privilege that definitely was not inherited, but I think due to the vast number and also the passion of Indian people, it is earned. Um, now, like, I, I, how do you feel about India's direction for the game now that it is setting the vision and the course of cricket? I think it is you're right it is obviously been earned uh, by the size of population by the cricket that was played I think by some visionaries like Jagmohan Dalmia mm -hmm. and uh, the things that they kind of what he ended up doing and you know making India the powerhouse mm. uh, of cricket <clears throat> that's another story that's just waiting to be told man it's amazing but uh, yeah so it has happened I think I think that way back and it takes me back to a story with Jagmohan Dalmi and the setting up of the Asian Cricket Council to benefit at least the neighbors and and Asian cricket which at that time didn't have that much of a voice and i would say even now it doesn't have that much I mean, sri lanka and bangladesh and afghanistan and pakistan and now nepal they played the asia cup they don't have that much of financial muscle as india does or as england does and australia does that's always going to be the big 3 right so and you're right i think the power center now has become india i think india first indian cricket i think will first have to i don't think the indian cricket establishment has completely made peace or completely understood or or is comfortable with the power that they wield yet it's like it's almost like the first 20 it's like when spider man when he gets bitten by the spider for the first like 5 minutes he's really confused he's just <laughs> flying all over the place you got to harness that power and optimize it and use it so i think it's going to come to that stage now yep. and uh, 
I think it's going to be done together with England and Australia. I do believe that because you want cricket to grow all over the world. America's kind of trying now mm. and they're not they're not sure whether it wants to be like an American sport or an imported sport, americanized. Mm. So everyone's trying to grow it because you know that the the subcontinental diaspora is big enough to support kind of league cricket with just sheer numbers. So everyone's trying to kind of grasp it, but what will pull this back and what people will have to sort out is just so many formats. Mm. You can't have T10, T20, ODI cricket, 100 test cricket. It's it's too much, right? So I genuinely believe if the game has to grow all over it's got to be T20 cricket that's the one that is perhaps the most condensed form uh, and as far as uh, India with all the power is concerned I'm sure that it'll in 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 due course of time everyone will settle into everyone will settle into these roles right and and you know things change so I still feel it's a bit of a it's a bit of a changing thing it's, you know it's only mm. been 15 16 years of the ipl it's a really young mm. league mm. the numbers have only gone absolutely mental like last year right mm. they were crazy numbers but last year they went absolutely crazy so i think it's going to i i think maybe in a few years spiderman's going to be swinging off buildings and you know <laughs> it's going to be right it's going to be just right awesome well, i don't know if i've answered i don't know if i've answered your question oh it's a completely uh, unfair question I, unprompted uh a pretty good answer off the top of your head okay great mm. <laughs> uh jk i don't want to get into any trouble you know no but yeah no i know man. It's, it's a common theme when we're talking uh, about cricket in india yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. fine Please line between irreverence yeah um <laughs> now jk th- thank you so much for your time man uh, for people who are watching this show you uh i mean i don't want to give too much away but you you're away uh tomorrow and you fit us in among many many other things that you're uh, you're doing Thank you for taking us through, you know, philosophy, old media, new media, um, you know, breakfast with champions, uh, India and the World Cup and, you know, Thor coming in Spider-Man. Uh, like all very good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Something for everyone. Right, yeah, right Something in that, right in our wheelhouse. Everything. Uh, this We is, got everything. Yeah, does yeah. that does that earn me a small picture on the, one of those shelves behind? You? <laughs> <laughs> sure, man. Send yeah. one over. Send one over. Well, Preferably so naked. Preferably naked. Mm. And Thor. Mm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's the picture I'm sending. That's the one. Uh, people will know forever. Li- this is the part of the show where I'm meant to ask people to subscribe to TGC, but I reckon you've already decided if you want to or not. Uh, if you've made it this far, so do it. Uh, or don't. It's up to you. Uh, Gaurav Kapoor, thanks so much for joining us, man. All the best for the World Cup and everything beyond. Hope to catch you over there one day. Thanks, boys. Hope to see you here soon and hope to jam with you when you're here. And thank you so much for having me. I'm a big fan of the show, so uh, I was... Uh, very excited to be on it and uh, i thought that even though i'm really tight i have to fit you guys in right? <laughs> 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 that'll do